I've got lip red fever. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. We're gonna take a look at the three different options that you have now within Flipgrid since the August 1st updates to get started with creating your grids and your topics and getting your students ready to go for those first days of school. We're gonna start by clicking on new grid within your dashboard. So let's take a look at the three options and there'll be three different videos. I'll link all of those together. So look, at, look in the description below. The first option you have here is if your school or district has school issued Microsoft or Google accounts for teachers and students. If you do, whatever comes after the at symbol in your email is what you would enter in in the spot where it asks when you select that option. Again, check out that other video for that. And at that point, only people that can verify that they have an email address that matches that will be able to get onto your grid. So that's gonna be your most secure method in my opinion uh, because it does really truly limit it to just people within your domain. The second option here is a great option and especially if you have little kids, um, but for those of you that aren't fortunate enough to have school email accounts issued to you, you guys can create that and we're going to be looking at this one more in depth here. And then you have the public or PLC one. So that's kind of what you would call the old traditional methods. There is a little twist um, where you still have to verify an email address up front, but it does save you some time at the end. So even though we have this three tiered system, I do think that Flipgrid's done a good job of keeping it simple enough for us to be able to use this stuff uh, in a similar manner to what we did before and still meeting those added security measures that they needed. But for this grid, we're gonna go ahead and get going and create one. We're gonna call this one the student ID list. You give it your grid name just like you always have. And then you can go ahead and give it a custom code still if you want to. And then you can pick your picture just like you've always been able to and then say next. Now, when you come to the next stage, then it's gonna tell you or ask you to be able to go ahead and create your student list. So you can go ahead and click right here for temp and then open up that template. And then you could go ahead and expand this a little bit so that you can see it. You could enter in your first names, last names, and ID numbers for all of your students right here in this list. Just remember, if you do this, you do not have to give real names. You can always give nicknames or some other method for you. Maybe you just do first name and the first letter of the last name, depending on what you have with your students. But this truly allows you to not give any information that's directly attached to that student in any way. Once you have that done, you would save it in a location that you're comfortable with on your computer. And then you would say, upload a CSV here or here, and you would go find that and attach it, and then boom, it'll bring all those student names right into it. You also have the option just to create them on the fly right here. So I'm gonna demonstrate that with just two names. And after you have your students entered, you just click next. And at this point, you can go ahead and download the student list. When you click on that, it's gonna create a PDF file that you can then open and you can cut these cards out and give them to your kids. So now you've got all your kids entered, you've got the information ready to go. Now you can either go view that as a student or you can customize your grid and do what you need to, uh, to change things up. I'm just gonna say all set right here. Now at this point, I'm gonna switch to another grid and show you how you can get your kids logged into it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and enter in a code so that I could demonstrate this next part. Once I come into the grid, it's gonna give me the option to just put in the ID or to go ahead and scan a QR code. So if you have littles, this is a great way. They don't even have to worry about typing. We're gonna say allow on our browser for our camera. And then as soon as you can see your camera, you're gonna go ahead and get your QR code held up to it. And voila, you're in your grid, ready to go. Now you can record your video just like you always have, only at the end of it, it's not gonna ask for information because it already captured that information up front. So where you had a little bit less work up front before, now you have less work at the end. I think it's still a wash on time and I think it's still a good job with what they've done at this point. Now, one thing that I wanna to suggest to you is if you're using this method, especially if you're doing this with little kids and you have several topics on your grid, when you get that QR code, the QR code is gonna be for a grid, not a topic. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you remember to go in and pin the topic. So right over here, you can always pin a topic. Once you have multiple topics on there, you wanna have that first topic be the one that they need to get to just for simplicity. So don't forget about this option right here to pin it. And that way when you have multiple ones, that will always jump up to the top left corner. As soon as they scan into the grid, then they can click that topic and then they can run with what they need to do. So this is just a quick look at how you can go ahead and get started with the student ID option for grid creation. I hope you find it handy. Check out the other videos and let me know what you think. Thanks a lot. Yeah.